Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service for Palm Sunday this morning. And uh, normally we might have been out in amongst the community. We might have been processing. We may have had donkeys. I don't know if you ever do donkeys in this benefice. We used to do two donkeys and a pony at Coggershaw because they couldn't possibly go out without each other. So it was, uh, it was quite something in Coggershaw, but I'm not sure that uh, it was necessarily what Jesus had in mind. <laughs> So today, as you can see, I have got people from all around the benefice with me, which is lovely. And we're going to do for you a bit later on um, a dramatised version of The Passion. So uh, here's hoping that it works and that it comes across OK. But before we do that, it is Palm Sunday. So hopefully, if you've had the messages that have been coming around, you may have a palm cross or you may have made one out of paper. And thank you to George for that link to YouTube to how to do that. So we are going to begin as usual with the blessing of the palm crosses. I'm going to put mine down because I can't hold that and my tablet. And uh, let's just be quiet for a moment as we come before God. I think Tim is going to start for us. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your king comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. And now if you have your palm crossed to the ready, I'm going to say the prayer of blessing. God, our savior, whose son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, we couldn't have Palm Sunday without Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. It's kind of obligatory, isn't it, really? Um, so I'm going to play that now for us.
So now we are going to read for you the dramatised version of The Passion. So if I can ask everybody to unmute themselves if you haven't already. Tim, I muted you earlier on, so you'll need to unmute yourself. Sorry, you wouldn't necessarily have been aware of that. <laughs> Hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during, not the, during the festival, or they may, there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? But the ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii in the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want, us, want to us to go and make the preparation, make the preparation for you to you eat, eat Passover? Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and the man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. <laughs> when it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. Surely not I. Jesus said to them, Is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me? For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, 
even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The, ta the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, My swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth, they caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple, make it, make it made with hands, and in three days I'll build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? And he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, Am, and you will see the Son of Man ceased at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. Prophecy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. 
but he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For well, he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail! Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you would destroy the temples and build in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, 
Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome. They, these used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now we're going to have our second hymn, so if I can ask everybody please to mute themselves again. And the second hymn is My Song is Love Unknown. Except that it wanted to play something different there for a moment. Hold on, let's try again.
Joe, would you like to lead us in prayer? Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your triumphal entry into our world each and every day. The explosion of buds on the trees proclaim Hosanna. Rushing water falling from heaven, gurgling to the sea, proclaims Hosanna. The fragrance of spring in the morning, the morning air proclaims Hosanna. We long to join this chorus, giving you thanks and praise for who you are, for all you have created, all you are creating. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for sending Jesus, who showed us your love for all creation, your love for us. He opened our eyes to see your kingdom come here on earth. Forgive us for the times when we have gone about our own business, concerned with many things, oblivious to the needs of those around us, oblivious to the call of your love in our heart. God of grace, equip us to be your servants, listening, eager, ready. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for your presence in our world, even in war-filled places. We hear of bombs dropped, children killed, the needy betrayed, of hunger and misery. We are tempted to despair and to think that you have forsaken us. We are tempted to think that you are powerless. Give us a vision of your entry into our world as the Prince of Peace, changing hearts, changing our hearts one by one, creating an army of peacemakers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our families and friends we pray for the bereaved, the sick and the lonely, that they may receive comfort, companionship and care from those around them. We pray for those who have lost hope, that they may find the joy of the Holy Spirit within their hearts. We take a moment of silence now for our own personal prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, prayer. hear our prayer. God of great deeds, open our hearts to be your hearts, our hands to be your hands, our arms to be your loving arms for all who need your presence. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Joe. So now we come to the peace. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. 
peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. We find death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured for us, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. May we all offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of your son set before us in bread and wine. As I now receive these precious sacraments on behalf of all, May the comfort and reconciliation they represent be tangible to all who are watching but unable to receive. Fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit wherever we are at this moment. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. 
Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May Christ, who brings, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope that you enjoyed the Passion Narrative. And next week, some of our churches will be reopening. I'm going to be at Goldhanger for the Easter Sunday service, and I will live stream, God willing, from there. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you next week. I hope whatever you're doing today, you have a really blessed Sunday.